Well, I want to welcome you to Grace Cafe. My name is Mark Ray. I am Executive Director of the Grace Center for Spiritual Development, and I want to welcome you this morning. We've got two, two guests this morning. It's a first for us here at Grace Cafe, so we're hoping that the split screen is going to bring them fully to life for you this morning. Let me uh, invite you to join us, invite you to share. This is a Facebook Live post. Let me invite you to share your Facebook page with other people and get them to join in because we're going to be talking about specifically um, how chaplaincy works within the church organization. Um, so if you're at all interested, if you're a member of a church, if you're a part of a church, if you're wanting to understand the pastoral heart of a church, this is the conversation for you to be a part of. Uh, my guests this morning, uh, Chaplain Ken Schlenker, who was my guest a couple of weeks ago, and we talked through a number of things related to chaplaincy. Um, Ken, welcome this morning. Glad to have you back again. Thank you. Mark. Also, um, uh, Steve Newowner, my good friend from Dallas. Uh, Steve is um, director of Grace Center for Spiritual Development there with his Grace Cafe mug. Uh, Got to grab your Grace Cafe mug while you can. Um, and Steve is responsible for the expansion of uh, Grace Center for Spiritual Development in and around Texas and beyond, um, as well as the movement of the chaplaincy program through the church uh, through the church ministry. So I want to welcome you both this morning. It's good to see your smiling faces. Uh, mm -hmm. We got a lot to cover okay. in a short period of time. So let me invite everybody once again, go grab your favorite cup of coffee and your favorite mug, um, your cup of tea, and come sit and join us. This is Facebook Live, so you can also send your questions in through Facebook, and we can uh, pick those up if you've got questions for either one of these two gentlemen. So let me launch in. Uh, Ken, let me make sure we've got you. Can we hear you? Say good morning. Yep. Good morning. Oh, we got him. Steve, good morning yes. to you too. Good, good morning. Um, there is something brand new that has has been introduced. Uh, and Steve, let me address this to you first. Um, and then Ken, I'm going to circle back around and kind of get some of the, the background for this. But um, Steve, you've developed something specifically for the translation of the, the chaplaincy into a church ministry. They're called care teams. Give us kind of an overview, a 30,000 foot level. Don't dive down deep with this yet, but 30,000 foot okay. level on what are, what are care teams? What's the, what's the heart behind a care team? Oh, well, the heart behind the care team, of course, is the, is the good Samaritan in our call. And our commission by the Lord Jesus Christ, not only to love him with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, but to love one another, and to reach out to one another. And, and so having walked with the Lord for 40 some odd years, it's been my heart to go out and to, to meet people. And so the care team ministry within churches is truly our calling. When we look around, uh, sometimes in church, we see a lot of people sitting in the church, but we've been commissioned to go out and to love others. And so the care team ministry is all about meeting the needs, people who are in crisis. And also people are experiencing other wonderful things such as weddings and such. Yeah. But the whole idea behind care team ministry is with all the crises that are occurring throughout our society, throughout our culture, not just in the church, but outside the walls of the church, they're everywhere. And oftentimes, the church thinks it's the pastor's responsibility, the senior pastors, but they're really busy. We've all been called as the body of Christ to reach out. And so we put together a program uh, called Care Team Ministry in collaboration, um, thankfully, with uh, senior chaplain Ken Schenkler, who is such a great professor and teacher of chaplaincy skills. And personally, as a person who has been involved in church leadership for many years, I realized that chaplaincy skills are something that are so helpful in training of people, equipping people within the church to go out and to bless one another. So that's the there's idea. A, there, there's a tagline to care teams that I love. Um, and the, the, the tagline basically is bringing a pastoral heart back to the church. Yes. And it's the idea of 
uh, 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 the call for us to love one another is really a call to be to bring pastoral care into the church and beyond the four walls of the church. Um, and care teams then trains people to be able to do that, correct? That's correct. And it's so, been a beautiful thing to see. Good. Steve, you mentioned one thing called crisis. I'm going to move over to Ken here for just a minute um, because I, I want you to broaden our definition of the word crisis. Um, because when I think of crisis, I think of tragedy. But crisis, uh, because, and, and most of us aren't equipped to jump into the midst of a tragic circumstance, but, but the word crisis could, especially in a church ministry, could really be expanded. Walk me through just some of the expansion of the idea of what a crisis might entail. Uh, basically, when somebody is placed into a situation that's overwhelming, any of those situations, uh, has the potential to put the person into a position that they're not able to function or cope. And with that definition, it could be anything. Yeah. Technically, it's called a critical incident. Uh, it's, by definition, it's when a normal person is in an abnormal situation that they're overwhelmed to the point of dysfunction. The way I'd like to explain it is they, they drop down into their pit of chaos. Okay. And they don't, they don't like where they're at. And they want to figure out how to get out of it but it's so abnormal that they've been overwhelmed that their perception is they can't cope or deal with it. So the chaplain can come alongside that's skilled and be able to assess and empower the person so that they can climb out of their pit. So it's truly so me, what Steve was talking about. Let, let me let me take this to another level. Um, so a crisis of faith for somebody. Mm -hmm is a crisis. A crisis yeah, but of, that's also, that would also yeah. be a normal response. Sure. You know, uh, the, 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 or a cry of distress, actually, like a baby dies. You know, why would God allow this to happen? That's a, that's a normal response. Where a crisis of faith, of somebody maybe leaving the faith, or even sometimes a crisis can lead people to God. Yeah. Uh, it can go in either direction. Um, you, you could also have a crisis of relationship. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm dying here. I'm all alone. I need to find a place where there would be people who would welcome me. Um, yes. There could be a, uh, like I was saying before, you could have this crisis of faith, which is my faith community isn't doing it for me. Or, um, mm -hmm. gee, what's becoming seemingly the norm today is that there are those in pastoral positions that are stepping away from the faith, which is causing congregations to have a crisis of faith. Mm -hmm. These are places where uh, where someone with some training can step in and actually come alongside somebody, correct? Am I, am I still on, on solid ground here? <laughs> Absolutely. So it, it doesn't necessarily, a crisis doesn't necessarily have to mean that it is a, a, a um, a tragic loss of life or something to that extent, it could be, uh, it, and I loved how you put it, uh, taking something normal and putting it into an, an abnormal circumstance. So um, I, I've been going along, life, have been, like his, life has been good, and then this happens, and I find myself in a crisis. Um, where Absolutely. do I turn? Uh, you'd love to be able to say, you should always turn to the church, because that's where people, that's where people are who exist. But I'll tell you, um, having been trained and been a pastor, there's a whole lot that you're never mm -hmm. trained for in seminary. You're never yeah. trained for except on the job. And something like this training could be a marvelous support help, not just right. to the pastoral staff, but if you had a congregation with multiple people trained in just some level of this, all of a sudden you've got a pastoral church. Yeah, That's, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and in this wasteland, <laughs> that's an oasis. <laughs> that yeah. is a beautiful picture. Yeah, that was actually part of the foundation uh, of how Care Force got started. I was actually a care and missions pastor in Orange County, California. And we actually started when 9-11 hit. Mm. And I realized people weren't 
really trained to be in those types of environments. The heart was willing, the, the, the attitude was correct, but you know, you're going to some different situations that most people have never been trained to be in. So we started getting training and uh, we now have over 40 different courses. And that's part of the integration here with, at Great School of Theology. But what I learned was the chaplain is kind of an intersection, an ambassador of the kingdom of God that connects the sacred and the secular along with care and missions. And as the care pastor at the church, we wanted everybody to be in small group ministry. And what Steve has done is taken that model and developed this uh, care t crisis care team inside the church that you know really is what we were doing at our church but has codified it now into an infrastructure that can be delivered and duplicated at churches and i'm just absolutely thrilled with it uh, so, so we, let me let me move the question back over to you steve um then if if this is if this is a chaplaincy training modified what does somebody who comes into a care team ministry what do they get trained in um, what what are some of the topical things that they would be trained in? Oh, that's a good question, Mark, because there are some really key principles that we must address because of all these various crises. And as you know, people oftentimes are reluctant to address them unless they know something. And so what we're creating and have created are several modules that will address things. And so what I believe is a good approach is to be able to first come into the church and meet with the leadership of the church and to begin to cast a vision and to be able to present to them what are the ideas behind care team ministry and as that buy-in happens then set up follow-up meetings for people that they may have identified within their congregation where I or others that are, are so trained can come in and present steps of these basic modules like an overview of, of what it is to truly be um, a care minister and where it comes from um, biblically, because all of this is biblically based, and present this uh, program to them, and then set up a couple of one or two hour segments and modules where we can go into training. But we do have um, a program put together for the church, Ken, that you mentioned called developing a pastoral heart within your church to bless your neighbor. And so we walk them through this process and we want to engage them, come alongside the leadership and to train people up with this program. So, so would you have topics like counseling somebody through grief or uh, hospital visits or uh, family relationships or forgiveness, what, would those be some of the topical things? How to love one another, would those be some of the topical things that are actually covered in, in the training? Absolutely, spot on. Because we will be teaching people um, in these key areas of stress, um, such as how to deal with someone when a serious event has happened in their life. It could be um, someone who's gotten very, very sick in their family or mm -hmm. looking at a serious illness. How do we deal with that properly? How do we deal with someone who is in a crisis in their marriage, who is struggling in their marriage? Or someone, a spouse, was caught in something like pornography, which is so prevalent today. How do we come alongside that person and help them in that crisis? So if I'm a small group leader, Mm -hmm. you, can you tailor some of this training specifically for uh, instances that I would find myself in as a small group leader? Absolutely. We can uh, help them because a small group leader will be exposed to all these different things because families are struggling with domestic disputes and there are unexpected things that happen. And so we come alongside the small group leaders to train them up in these areas so they feel very confident. They'll be confident in being able to speak with them, but also when they identify something after a proper assessment, they'll be able to direct them to possibly a professional in this, because as a small group leader, 
they cannot be expected to do it all. Possibly they don't have in-depth training in some of these areas, but what we do is we provide enough information so that they are able to identify the situation and be able to work up a plan. Good. Learn listening Good. skills and help them right so, where they are. So Ken, you've been obviously involved in this if you started this back in 2001. Um, if, if I'm a pastor on a church staff, why would I want something like a care team in my church? What, what, would, what would motivate me to, to want to, to bring a care team into my church? Well, I believe by definition, the building isn't the church, but the people yeah. in the church are the church. Right. And what we want is to build up one another unto good works and okay. onto uh, the ability to take care of one another. It's what we're called to do. So just like uh, Jethro came to Moses and said, it's not good for you uh, to do this on your own, but you need other people to help you, basically. Uh, that's kind of the principle, and that, that's actually what we did. We, we took the chaplain, the people that we had trained for chaplaincy for disasters, and realize, you know, like all the things that Steve was talking about just now, those are disasters in individuals' lives. Right. And right. As, as you both know, I came from a, a Jewish faith, and the rabbis uh, had two blessings over the bread, the ones over the special occasions of the year and the daily blessing. And they believed that the daily blessing was more miraculous than the single occasions of the year. And that kind of got into the formation of why Care Force came into existence because what we needed, what we ought to be doing biblically is truly sacrificial, other focused, empathetic love of God and of others. And by raising up the congregation from a biblical perspective to learn how to take care of one another the world will come to know us because of the love that we demonstrate. And that exact same love is what should be happening in the world. So as a pastor, I'd want to have everybody in the church trained from a biblical yes. perspective because our ministry is 24-7, 365. It's where we are. I have a class of 50 students, and I'll ask them how many are in full-time ministry, and the two pastors' hands go up. I says, okay, put them down. And then I ask, how many of you are believers? All the hands go up. And I ask, how many of you in full-time ministry? And then everybody finally gets it. So we need to come alongside one another and love one another enough to be able to build one another up so that we become more of what God intended and designed each of us to be. So then for a, for a pastoral staff, this is really – this is training for boots on the ground. Absolutely. Pastoral, pastoral boots on the ground. Um, Absolutely. And if you, I guess if you're a church member, then one of the questions has always been, well, where do I get involved? How do I serve? Um, and, Absolutely. And you can get the same, the same answer that seems to be given. Well, we've got an opening in our children's ministry, marvelous ministry, but what if I'm not called to children's ministry? What if I'm not called to youth ministry? Where else do I serve? I'm not on the worship team because I can't sing. Where else do I serve? This is an opportunity to be trained where you could serve in any capacity, anywhere, not only in the church, but outside the four walls of the church. Absolutely. When we look at Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 9, which is the foundation of the great commandment and Leviticus 19, 18, it says specifically, you shall talk about this when you lie down, when you rise up, when you go out, when you go in. I'm sorry, is there any other time or place that we're not supposed to be doing this? Yeah. It's everywhere all the time. Ministry yeah. and service and ministry is that which is always present in front of us and around us. So being the church and the demonstration of that self-sacrificial, other-focused love that's defined in Deuteronomy 6, 5, via hafta, a chav, verb, it's an action, it's not a noun, it's not a state of being or a quality yeah. of existence. That's what we're supposed to be doing all the time. So what this will do is it comes alongside pastors in the church and works with them to help develop and empower people 
to be ministers 24 7 365 and not be afraid of entering into the trauma of other people but being the church in the midst of crisis and other people's lives uh, so the, the great great segue to this so steve when you present care teams this is not just training for the congregation this is also training for the pastoral staff because i'm i'm here to tell you you don't get this type of training unless you go to great school of theology which we <laughs> offer a master's degree in this but, but one of but, the first <laughs> yeah but but primarily this kind of training is not is not it's not taught in seminaries this type of pastoral training is not taught in seminaries i had a I had a pastor friend of mine who said uh, I got I got to get off this phone call because I'm headed down to have a hospital visit with a guy who's who's dying from cancer and I have no idea what to say to him. Mm. That's that's not an unusual scenario because that training we know how to exegete the word we know how to mm -hmm. preach a sermon we know how to teach but. And, and, and I'm sorry when you're called to pastoral ministry, which we all are. Thank you, Ken, for the reminder of that. We're all called to pastoral ministry because we're all called to love each other. But mm -hmm. how often have you been taught what that looks like? That's um, right. Go it's, to the upper room and Jesus, Jesus washes the disciples' feet. How does that translate into how do I serve someone else, showing them how I love them? This could be that kind of training, correct? Oh, you're so spot on, Ken, because all of the pastors that I've met with over the years, you're so right. If they've been through seminary, most have, but rarely has anyone taken more than one, two, three hours worth of class on pastoral yeah. care. And that's difficult. And that's what motivated me so much to be uh, get more involved in learning how to do this. And I have... It's such a wonderful thing to come alongside the pastors because they have a very difficult process. Do as yeah. you mentioned, they do a great job exegeting the word, preaching, coordinating things, and so forth. But our responsibility is to come alongside them, the elders, the deacons of the churches, and so forth, and to help train them up and find out how can we come alongside you and help you train. And so that they become familiar with these basic things so that they know how, when a relationship is in danger, how to address it. Or when people are hurting themselves, such as children cutting themselves or, or drug abuse and so forth, how do we deal with that? These are things that we address and help them with. Living with physical problems of, of disease and, oh my goodness, a child with special needs and so forth or a bad injury or mental health. We help them to learn how to deal with this in our programs. These are critical things to help them. And so it is not just the body, it is the pastors, but we're there to serve the pastors and the leadership in any way that we can. And oftentimes it is by training up the flock and helping them under their direction. So, so Ken, how would this, how would, how would care teams be different from other offerings for churches out there for similar types of programs. How, how does this differ? Well, I mean, in other words, why as a church would I say, that's the program I want to bring in inside the four walls to train my people and send them out? Why, why care teams? The program is going to be in a, a process that takes people deeper and deeper into understanding of the different issues. So it's going to start off with basic uh, level and then help to set up an infrastructure within the church and then provide the training for those people. And then some of those people may want to go on and get some additional training on issues like suicide, for example, or domestic violence or, or that type of stuff. Uh, and it, so it can grow into something that not only – and those issues happen inside the church, you know, sure. you which is un un uh, unfortunate. But it does happen, and like has been stated, those types of issues don't generally get covered at seminary. Um, but they're facts of life that we're thrust into as pastors to have to deal with. So what this will allow the pastors to do is we're able to come alongside them is to have a place for everybody to fit in 
at whatever level that they are at and can help them to develop a infrastructure of support that could be used for inreach to the body and also for outreach into the community because the skill sets that we can take people into are sought after by secular organizations and it opens up the door for uh, opportunities within the, the community for the church to be seen in a way that they haven't been seen. The world looks at the church and says it isn't relevant. And I guarantee you, I've been doing this for a lot of years, I get calls from, the, from organizations all over the world, and federal government, local and state and county. Uh, it's amazing what can happen uh, from people that are properly trained with basically this philosophy of ministry yeah. that's here, of purpose, presence, and peace to provide sacred care. It's our core value that we have a 40-hour class that this could build into called Practical Chaplaincy that can develop uh, and be able to use in the community and also for the issues that happen inside the church. Well, that, so let me, let, me, let me land the plate on this one. Um, <clears throat> what we're basically saying is the care teams can come in and establish an infrastructure within the church where people can get trained, can be organized, coordinated, and sent out both within the church and outside the church. And you can be trained at multiple levels. You could be trained at just a little bit perfect for what you might need as a small group leader, but you could also be trained uh, if you want to go into uh, chaplaincy and law enforcement or into the hospital systems or into hospice care or over here at PTSD with military, if you're close to that. Multiple levels of training and, and really ongoing training, if I understand it. I, I can remember uh, tragically I was on Young Life staff years, this is a long, long time ago, and it was back when suicides in schools were not the norm. And a child had, had committed suicide in this high school, and the high school administration was looking for anybody who could come in and counsel parents, students, teachers, administrators, and they, they didn't know where to turn. Um, all of a sudden, what I'm hearing is even in a crisis situation like that, they weren't turning to the churches. They were looking for somebody who had any kind of training to come in and sit down and begin to counsel them through that. You're talking about the potential that if you're a church of 500 people, here's the potential of 500 counselors uh, in a situation like that, should they all choose to get trained at certain levels. Um, that's, an, that's an unbelievable force in a community. Um, should should they be trained, and that that's that's on a different that's on a different level than um, than some of the programs that are out there, because this is this is not only build the structure, but this is train the people at multiple levels and continue training them for use inside the church and outside the church. That's that's pretty significant. Yeah, that that's exactly what Care Force is about, because what you, the situation you just described is actually what we not only do, but train people to do, to go into the church, uh, the schools, and to, to help with those types of situations. But I'd like to back up because you used the word counselor, um, and I, I need to define this because in thinking of a process of a series of events, at the moment of the crisis, the, the skill set that is needed there is assessment capability, active listening, communication skills, and critical incident stress management, crisis intervention. That's the moment somebody goes into the pit. Now, sometimes people are stuck in the pit and they need continued help after they've kind of somewhat come out of it, uh, such as post-traumatic stress injury, soul wounding, moral wounding. That's where counseling comes in. So Got at it. the moment of the crisis is crisis intervention skills and long term is counseling well we deal with and train on both issues so yeah. from the church's perspective both of those issues can be empowered into the congregation at the church to, to have the body take care of the body and also to have the church leave the building into the yeah. world and be yeah. the church in the world i, I used yeah. to have a, a brick wall on our website that says the church has left the building. 
Word I difference. like that. Yep, that's good. Uh, Steve, tell me, um, I'm a pastor in a church. How do I how do I get introduced to a care team? Uh, this is a great question because this is part of my responsibilities, reaching out to the community <laughs> and the faith community. And <clears throat> I'll just tell you a story of, of one that, that uh, has been a beautiful experience, and that's in Midland, <clears throat> Texas. In Midland, I had the opportunity to meet with an elder, and he said, well, why don't you come and do a presentation over lunch? We'll throw up a, a lunch for some people that, that uh, may be interested in helping other people. And all of a sudden, there were about 35 people at the a little taco uh, lunch in Midland. And uh, the elder team was there, and a lot of people were there. And we made a presentation of what Kenny was talking about. And over the course of an hour and a half or two hours, at the conclusion, the senior elder stood up and he said, you should all sign up for this. <laughs> and he encouraged them all. It was one of those things that was so beautiful. And and sure enough, coming up in, in mid-September, we're going to be taking uh, a number of people there in the community, uh, not only just that local church, but others as well, to be able to be trained up in something called practical chaplaincy. But to way to move this forward, because this is what we're wanting to do, not just in Texas, but in, in the, uh, uh, throughout the entire nation, is to be able to set up meetings like that and to be able to present the idea of care team ministers and to come alongside the leadership and train them. And so I'd say for, for a follow-up, please feel free to reach out to, uh, uh, to the website at, uh, at GSOT in the center and um, at the Chaplaincy Institute. And there's more information on that. And so we can certainly provide that detail for you. And I would be more than happy to respond back and uh, to anyone that would call and help them through this process. So you can go visit www.gsot, which is Grace School of Theology, gsot.edu slash center. Uh, you can look up institutes, go to the Chaplain Institute, get more information there. Um, I know that they can contact you, Ken, through the website directly, Steve. Um, your information is on the website as well uh, to be yes. able to do that. You can also, through this Facebook Live, if you want to send questions or contact information through here, we'll be glad to get you guys connected. Um, I'd hope to get into a whole other topic, but this has been so fascinating to be to see this kind of program that's available for the faith community. Can this also be done for, uh, for parachurch organizations too? Not just churches. This could also be offered to parachurch organizations. Okay. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing that right now with one, in fact, uh, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area that's expanding. And I met with about 40 men. Uh, it's a men's ministry and, uh, and have been given permission to be able to uh, share this concept with others. Well, I've begun Great. Friday mornings at 630, gathering Great. together with a group of men and taking them through this process. And guess what? A group of the guys have said, well, let's go into the uh, juvenile probation office and let's help the kids there. So we're beginning to start that up as well. Others Good. are going into prison ministry. It just continues to expand as you begin to talk about this and equipping people. All of a sudden then, breaking bread in Denton County, for instance, serving the homeless people there and in Louisville, Texas. People are becoming trained up through this process equipping them to reach out to love and to bless our neighbors so that's wonderful it's wonderful, wonderful. let me let me ask one final question because i know there's a lot going on and you, you've talked about midland i know there are other things going on in the dallas fort worth area and san antonio and houston and uh now i understand in california and, and maryland ken what uh what are the upcoming events that you've got on your plate related to training um <laughs> Uh, that kind of stuff. Just give give me the uh, give me the quick flyover. Well, first, if you go to training.careforce.us, all of our upcoming courses are there, along with all of the uh, registrations and PDF. But I'm actually flying up the beginning of September to Kansas City. I'm uh, training wounded warriors and Team Rubicon on suicide 
intervention. Uh, in September, we're doing the practical chaplaincy class over two weekends with some online stuff before and afterwards as well. Uh, and that's going to be from September 13th to the 22nd. Uh, and then back here in October, uh, on the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, we're doing some more suicide training. And then um, we're going to be at the American Association of Christian Counselors in uh, uh, Nashville at the Opperland Hotel area, uh, where we have the clinical pastoral education and care force and Grace Center. And Steve and I will be there. That'll be a great place for everybody to come and meet with us. And then uh, and also in October, we're going to be in San Antonio at the City Church and Banderas Road. And literally, I got things scheduled out all the way into June of 2020 already, but they're they're on the website there. Also, if you go to institute.careforce.us or you go to center.careforce.us, that will take you to the Grace Center for Spiritual Development and or directly to the uh, Chaplain Institute under the Grace Center as well. So that, that makes it easy to remember. So training institute or center.careforce.us. Great. Guys, I want to thank you both for being a part of Grace Cafe this morning. You've opened our eyes to a marvelous new ministry into the church and parachurch organizations, the training that's available. This is, um, I continue to be astounded at the fact that uh, uh, church members never really get trained in anything. They come, they listen to a sermon, they do a little worship, they fellowship a little bit. Uh, they they serve in some ministries, but no one ever really takes the time to really sit down and train them in life skills, if you will, um, because every one of us, uh, every one of us is going to experience. I mean, Christ was very, very, very honest when he said, you will experience trouble in this world. This is this is an opportunity for anybody in the church to be trained in skills to handle those troubles and to come alongside their neighbors, friends, relatives, co-workers when they have those issues and actually be the face of Christ in the midst of that time. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate your time this morning. I know we'll have you back on to see how things are going. Uh, thank you all for visiting us here at Grace Cafe. If you have questions, you can send them to gsot.edu slash center. Um, and we'd be happy to follow up with you on how to how to get you connected into Steve and to Ken to bring uh, care teams into your parish church and church organizations. Guys, thanks again. Thank you all for being here with Grace Cafe. Um, we look forward to next week. We'll get an opportunity to hear from uh, Gary Kiker, a good friend of ours, and, and uh, uh, talk to him about more in the in the counseling area. So thanks for being with us this morning. Guys, appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye, all.